Hi, and welcome to a brand new video of the Target Individual Program, the Target Individual Experience. Okay, uh, you see here on the screen is a book called Mind Control Language Pattern. And, you know, I've spoken about this book before, okay, and um, uh, I'll continue to speak about it as well as the uh, Caress and Persuasion program and other uh, uh, books or websites that expose uh, what is called doc psychology, doc NLP, uh, coercive persuasion program, or thought uh, control, uh, or thought control or brainwashing. Right, or psychological manipulation, as well as other things such as the illegal non-consensual human experimentation, the illegal microchipping for the purpose of remote neural monitoring, uh, the exposure of direct energy weapons being used on civilians, okay, and um, the damage and the effect that it has both psychologically, physically, and emotionally also uh, financially, okay, socially, you know, there's just a, a whole host of other things that, you know, can attribute it, can be attributed to these um, psychological programs, and when you try to expose it, they will uh, try and destroy or destroy your life, or get you to commit suicide, or set you up to imprison you, institutionalize you in a mental institution, in order to remove you from society so you um, cannot pose a threat in terms of exposing what it is that they're doing <clears throat> or what they have done and will continue to do. Okay? Um, so let's, this is just the, uh, this is the cover of the book which you can find on uh, Scribe. Uh, let me uh, if you look up here, you see the, the web address, scribe.com, uh, followed by some numbers and uh, my control language pattern. Okay, and so people have to be aware of what it is that's going on, and um, we can't turn a blind eye to these things because you know it could eventually happen to you or your children or your uncle, your your father, your mother, your sister, your brother, aunts, nephew, nieces, nephew, okay, your friends, colleagues. And so we have to uh, understand this. Now the reason why I'm also bringing this up because uh, yesterday, so yesterday was Thursday the uh, 14th of March and yesterday was my children's uh, parent teacher conference okay so I went to this school okay and as I entered the school immediately the talking and start started the psychological harassment started uh, from the students to the parents to the teachers the faculties they all joined in and targeted me okay uh, you know, doing things like, uh, you know, doing these hand signals and stuff like that. And, you know, I'll explain a lot of stuff, you know, that uh, trying to put me through a fixation drill, uh, you know, using the palm of their hands, which I talked about a lot. And it's funny because they tend to do this when um, I, f you know, they tend to do this when, uh, especially with, with Pamela, and when uh, they may, uh, what I believe, they're uh, introducing her to, or have people introduce themselves to her to date and stuff like that as a way and means of destroying, or, uh, you know, basically yeah, destroying our relationship, right? Because this is what they do. This is um, the coercive uh, nature of this program, okay? They do a lot of the stuff to destroy you socially, to destroy your relationships, to destroy you economically, 
these are things that they that they do. So in the school yesterday, like I said, uh, it would be microwave because they also, uh, you know, was microwaving my children also to uh, psychologically target me. And so um, I saw my daughter's uh, teacher first, and then I saw my son's teacher. And they, they, you know, my daughter didn't get a good report uh, because for one, um, because when we're being microwave, the side effects of being microwave in the home is that, you know, we, we can't sleep. We have a lot of problems sleeping. Okay. Um, also, uh, we get headaches. So not just I that get headaches, but my daughter, my son, Pam, get headaches. And you know, if I tell Pam with me in microwave, you know, she just like ignore it because, you know, I don't think she believes me, okay? Even though I'm giving her the information and stuff like that. And basically she had told me before that she didn't believe me. So, you know, I mean, you know, a lot of times I'm angry because of what they're doing, but what can I do? I I can't prove it in a sense that, you know, I don't have the resources nor the capacity to um, prove what's being done in a scientific way, okay? And so a lot of the information that I found, I found online, and a lot of it are no longer available online because over the past couple of years, they've been going dark. And when I mean dark, I mean they have been deleting or wiping stuff off the internet that relates to directed energy weapons, that relates to uh, remote neural monitoring. So a lot of the stuff that was also exposed on by Edward Snowden, um, a lot of the uh, information has also been deleted online. Okay, and so you know, I'm speaking from the standpoint of my experience, and that's why I always say, "Welcome to the Target Individual Experience and the Target Individual Program," because. It is my experience that I am based in, uh, you know, uh, are exposing what's being done based on my experience. Okay, so back to my kids. So uh, my daughter, you know, lack concentration. Uh, her short-term memory is gone, just as mine. Um, you know, I mean that she's five years old. Hers is even worse because she will, uh, you know. She had a test, and over the weekend, uh, Pam helped her study her words and everything. She wrote them down. She recognized them. She got every one of them right, okay, except for one. And then she, you know, then Pam, you know, had to concentrate on that and stuff like that. So she should have passed the test. So the day of the test, and she didn't get any. She only got one right, okay. One right. She knew the, the words. She knew how to spell them. Okay? Same thing with my son. Right? Short-term memory, lack of concentration. Okay? Uh, my His teacher actually said, you know, she said, when Ethan uh, concentrates and does his work, she says, I use his work as an example for every other student to see. Okay. She said Ethan could be a four student, but he's holding himself back. And he's not really holding himself back. You know, again, I cannot say to these people that me and my children are being microwave with uh direct energy weapons, okay, for mind control. And that has caused uh problems psychologically in terms of uh I shouldn't say psychologically, but um, neurologically in terms of the loss of short-term memory, okay? And also the uh, inability to concentrate, okay? And this is directly related to the directed energy weapons being used, the microwave weapons that are operating on the frequency of the human brain in order to control human beings without their knowledge, okay? So this is what's happening. So, you know, I saw my daughter teacher first, like I said, 
and then I saw my son's teacher and I was the last one to see her and it's funny how uh, they set that up you know because uh, we got to the school around I think okay the first meetings were from one to three and then the they had a second meeting from four to six right so we got there about 140 right so when I got there you know I signed the uh, the sheet and I was the last person to sign the sheet because no one else came after me okay and so you know I had the subliminal message about your last whatever race or whatever competition they're trying to uh, get me to engage or believe in right and so I noticed right because there were a couple of about three parents that went before me before I um, before it was my turn to see the, his, his teacher and you know they went in she talked to them they came out I went in to see her she got up she went into the hallway start talking to other teachers uh, then about a few minutes later there was a phone call she came in back into the room sat down uh, started talking to me and stuff like that and then so you know that was it we left walked to the elevator took the elevator down to the first floor elevator open two New York City police officer standing right in front of the elevator then the uh, custodian okay when the door opens he goes that looks like a clown car okay so you had one male police officer black male and another uh, female police officer black female and the male police officer kept staring at my daughter okay so you know it happened so quick that I couldn't really uh, take up my phone to record because we were walking out the elevator as I was because I was kind of surprised to see the NYPD officers there and not to say like you know maybe they have kids in the school because it was three o'clock at least uh, after three o'clock that we left there you know and the next uh, set of meetings didn't start till four o'clock and this was like a little after three so you know so again uh, as we was leaving, you know, you had people in the hallway, parents, you know, sticking their finger in the ears. The security guard, who's a female, she, she minutes she sees me, she starts playing with her ear, with her hair, and and I was like, okay, whatever, right? So <laughs> I was like, okay, so again, trying to intimidate me, okay, and stuff like that. So you know, took the kids to the park for a little bit. Um, that they want to go and of course they know because they listen to me either the, uh, through the uh, microphone on my phone or remote no monitoring so they already know and it's possibly remote no monitoring because the kids wanted to go to the um, the big schoolyard and they were they had asked me yesterday right so I told them yeah we can go after we finish uh, speaking to the teachers so they already had the kids in the play ground you know there was this one little boy he had on a red jacket and he kept following me he kept following me and again you know they're using the red theme again and you know so then uh, he, after he, a little while him uh, he stopped following me he went and played and then when I was about to leave got up got Ethan and Alyssa he came in front of me uh, you know this little boy now doing these hand signals and stuff like that so you know I was like wow Anyway, okay, you hear the siren <laughs> because again, expose them what it is that they're doing and they don't want me to expose it. See, one of the things that they try to do to prevent exposure or, for, or prevent them from being exposed is to have you, the TI, if you're a target individual, believe that if you talk about what they're doing to you, right, that you're somehow guilty of whatever it is they say you did, right? Or if you talk about it, they will label you mentally ill and possibly even kidnap you and bring you to a mental institution or mental facility, mental health facility, to uh, keep you there for some psych 
evaluation while they uh, manipulate your mind even more and pump you up with drugs or give you drugs to take right this is the the game that they play and this is what they do and this is for how long for so long they've been able to get away with what they're doing but they are targets okay who have decided that we're not going to be quiet while you do this to us because it's a violation of our humanity, your constitutional right, our civil rights, our human rights. Okay? So we're not going to just make you think that you can do this for whatever reason, for whatever. If you think we commit a crime or we did something wrong, we have every right to defend ourselves in a court of law and to be doing this for how many years to target some targets been going through this for 30 40 years okay being manipulated being harassed by the police uh, emergency vehicles uh, you know fire trucks with the noise campaign ambulances police cars you know with the noise campaign and so you know I mean come on people got to think right if you have committed a crime of they say as they say it is because and I'm speaking to TI it is because they wanted to put you in this program is for them to experiment on you right they have to set you up they have to manipulate your environment manipulate the people around you manipulate you right and then try to blackmail you into silence okay in order for you to not expose the fact that they illegally microchip you for experimentation purpose, for the purpose of remote low monitoring, using direct to energy weapons on you, on your persons, to see the effect, the health effect, the psychological effect, okay, the uh, you know physical effect of what it will do to a human being. This is the new way of how they select and put people into non-consensual human experimentation and I'm speaking just in the United States because okay, this is where I live okay so that's that when you think back as a t as a target way before you realize something was up they have been manipulating you manipulating the people around you okay every single day using what is called dark psychology okay as well as microwave uh, weapons and energy that broadcast at the same frequency as the human brain in order for them to control you in some ways or to uh, make decisions for you in some ways you're thinking that you're making your own decision but you're not it is actually their doing you're being either pre program okay or have your have them uh, give you command in real time using silent sound spec spectrum technology okay so um, let's go ahead so it says uh, I've seen the results of these dark and destructive language pattern they are uh, devious because most people don't even know they're happen they've happened or are happening I'm just putting that in there they live life half heartedly half heartedly with no purpose because someone meant to hurt them so imagine someone doing this to you messing with your mind okay uh, conditioning your mind negatively okay and you going through life just being negative doing negative things and people around you all saying, okay, well, you know, stay from that person. He's negative. She's negative. They're always getting into trouble and stuff like that. Not understanding and not realizing that a psychological process has been done to that individual to harm them, okay, to make them self-destruct, okay? Understand that, all right? So uh, if you know anyone using these mind control patterns to injure you, you to, to injure you have every right to act and stop them but also to act and stop them but to defend yourself okay so from now whenever I go into my uh, kids school and I'm being psychologically harassed or psychologically uh, 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 manipulated I will be recorded
I'm just going to put that out there on the record. Okay? And especially if I feel something is not right, you know, I'm going to be recorded. Okay? So if you don't want your children being exposed, don't get them involved in this coercive persuasion program. Okay? All right. So again, and also, one of his teachers, my son teacher was like, you know what? She said, I see a lot of children, okay, who cannot concentrate, okay? And I don't know whatever it is that they're telling you guys, the perps I'm, I'm speaking to, but these types of weapons, and the direct to energy weapons, is not just harming me or my kids, but they're also harming your children and yourself, okay? All right. Okay, so there's a lot that I want to discuss, and um, and I'm have to end up doing two video, okay? Uh, but this one, let's get to, as I always say, let's get to the videos, okay? So after um, we came out from the kids' school, okay, to, after you know speaking with their teacher because it was parents teacher uh, conference day uh, we had to go meet their mother uh, to go grocery shopping okay and again um, you know when I left the school I left the school feeling that you know the perpetrator of these crimes that's committed against me and others uh, they feel again sometimes you know they'll do this where they feel like they have some sort of upper hand that they've recruited uh, now these uh, uh, black people within the police force, within the fire department, because you know I don't get targeted by black police officers a lot, or black firefighters, or black pa paramedics. It's always uh, Hispanics and whites. Okay, and when I talk about hi Hispanics, I'm talking about the white-looking ones. Okay, that who have been the maj the majority of those that are within the police force targeting me and harassing me, within the uh, fire department targeting me and harassing me, within the ambulatory service, okay, uh, with the noise campaign harassing me. So, you know, a male and female, okay? So anyway, so we're in the car and we're getting ready to, to go. And I'm going to skip back, skip past some of these things because I, like I said, the, it, you know, it's, it's going to be a, a long video and I want to show certain things. Okay, all right. Uh, I think I might go on too. Let's see here. Okay, let's start from here. Okay, all right, let me, um, mute <laughs> for copyright purpose okay so again you'll see and I'm going to pause certain parts of the video because I want you guys to see exactly what it is that they're doing. You guys want to hear the sirens in the background. You always hate it when I start doing the videos when I'm about to. And again, also, you know, when you're dealing with this on a daily basis, the noise campaign, day and night, okay, <clears throat> and you see the lady in the red, and as she walks across the street. Now she's almost across the street. She turns and she stares at me. Okay. You see the guy walking across the street. Uh, he covers his mouth. Let's go back again. 
comes across the street and covers his mouth. You guys see that? Let's go back. There's a lady in the red jacket. Yeah, see him? <laughs> there is a particular part. I don't want to miss it. It is very, very important. I'm just going to let this play. Okay, you right here. Pause it. Let's pause it. Let's pause it. Let's pause it right here. So, you see this girl walking across the street? Okay. <clears throat> if you look at her hands, you see where her middle finger is? Basically, what she is doing is she has an object in her hand, and I've talked about this, okay, about how, um, you know, sometimes. Uh, people will walk towards me holding a white sheet of paper. Let me see if I can uh, get a sheet of paper here. Okay. Uh, they will walk towards me holding a white sheet of paper like this. And they will hold it like this in their hand using their middle finger. Okay. So what she's doing here is whatever object you put in her, in her hand. Now, no one holds an object in their hand like this. Okay, see what I'm doing here? Okay. And again, I'm not trying to target anybody, so excuse the color. There's the only thing that was in front of me that I picked up to show you besides the, the white paper. So, this is what they do. Okay. And they do this countless times. All right. Because again, Yesterday, they felt like, you know, this was an opportunity for them to go all out and targeting me. So the minute I came downstairs at that school and I saw those police officers, they were like, he was gone. Because the police officer started staring at my daughter, okay? Staring at my daughter as she was leaving the elevator. He looked at me, stared at my daughter. The black female police officer looking at me, okay? And I was like, okay, so, but you think, like I said, once the, the police start showing up like they do, again, this is a pattern of harassment, right? And again, you will see it here, exactly what's going to happen, okay? Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to skip past this again. Let's go. So I'm, you know, normally, and they know that when we go grocery shopping, especially on the weekday uh, after school, I always take the kids to McDonald's. Okay, and um, and as you see, as I approach the intersection, you'll see a police vehicle. Okay, on the next intersection, up the next light. It's going to make a left turn. Okay? I'm going to make a left turn. Look at the next light. See, making the turn right now. The left turn right now. Okay? Okay? Now, followed by another person in a red jacket. Okay? So remember, the, the use of the color red, particularly, is a theme in which they love to use, right? Whether uh, So when you think of the color red, right, what kind of emotions red uh, interject, right? One of anger, right? Um, you know, you're angry, you're upset, you know, that's when sometimes you see uh, people when they are, when they're mad and upset, they face turn red, right? So the color red is, again, colors are used to convey emotions or to uh, bring about an emotional arousal, right? And it usually is in the negative space, right? The negative emotions, 
okay so now again you know they love to I talked about this how they like to use the, the, the theme or deportation and so you'll see here as I made the turn okay here is a red vehicle now if you look at the vehicle okay there isn't a license plate but there is a flag okay and that flag is the Grenadian flag which is the country that I'm from that I was born in okay and again they constantly use the theme of deportation and you know I was, like I said you know if I keep recording you know every single day eventually like I said I'm gonna expose every single tactic that they use on me that I haven't gotten before okay uh, on camera I should say okay so this is again you'll see you know they're using the deportation theme because uh, again you know I guess if if I don't be quiet if I don't you know, if I keep exposing what it is that they're doing that they're going to arrest me and de deport me right so like I said in my previous video of them trying to send me subliminal messenger being uh, you know being charged with some sort of sexual assault okay so as a TI out there and a matter of fact there is a uh, another TI uh, that uh, uh, that I know who has a uh, who knows another TI in another state and he's been telling him about this program trying to educate him of what is happening to him and this TI made the mistake okay and is in trouble okay for you know I'm not you know it has to do with sex but I'm not even gonna <laughs> you know what I'm saying but again as a TI especially as a male you know you got to be careful of meeting women because a lot of these women are matter of fact all the women that you're probably gonna meet are all honey trap and you got to be very careful how you interact with them how you engage with them even if you start off having consensual sex and they may whisper you know because this is what they'll do this is how they trap you and trick you so she you you know you're having you know you're having intercourse with her you know in the middle of it she'll say underneath her bread stop right in which you know you're you're both you're, you're excited whatever and she says it in a very low tone but you continue right she'll turn around and go to the cops and say you raped her okay because you she told you to stop but you still continue right but she said it in a manner and and in a lowness of voice that you probably just didn't exactly hear it right so this is sort of the stuff that they'll do right and this I just I mean it has happened to me but I'm just only you know I'm hypothetical realizing you know what can happen right so you got to be aware of it and I tell my son my 17 year old I said listen man you know make sure that if you're as you get older and you meet women and you're intimate with them make sure that they're very concise and precise when and ask them is this something that you want to do okay if they say yes then okay if they give you uh, I don't know maybe this and such, such don't pursue it forget about it if you have to get up and leave get up and leave don't care how they take it okay because these are some of the ways in which they've conditioned women to trap men particularly if you're a target individual they will use honey traps to try to you know set you up to incarcerate you okay so you got to be aware of that so anyway back to the you know so again the deportation theme okay and then what they'll do afterwards is that you'll see them uh, you know like the perp uh, perpetrators they'll start giving each other a handshake um, but I, I was moving too fast in this one, so I wasn't able to get it on camera. But I, you'll see a perpetrator walking behind this vehicle across the street with his hands out, right? As if he's going to shake somebody's hand. But he does it, right, at a distance where, you know, the person can't even reach it. Okay, so let, let's, let's play the video. You guys can see. All right. So here he goes. Perp. She, look, look, look what he does. He takes his hands as if he's going to shake. Then on top of that, you'll see they use the palm and uh, you know the fixation drill with the palm of the hand. 
So his hands now is open, right, with his palm facing towards me. Now, he's this individual here on the right, you see right by this car, this red vehicle here. Look how far this individual is, okay? Now, let me ask you a question, okay? If you're that far away from someone where you have to walk in front of this car, then turn, would you be putting your hands out to shake that individual hands at the distance that you're at, okay? So again, you got to be very technical about this stuff because this is what they do to you. They are very technical in analyzing you and manipulating you. And uh, so you have to be very technical in explaining their behavior, right? So that people will understand and think and say, you know what? Yeah, you're right. You know, I wouldn't stretch my hands out when, you know, I have to do all of that just to get to that person. I will wait till I'm close to that person to stretch my hands out to shake their hands. Okay. All right. Okay. So I did, did get it. All right. So now, again, pulled into the McDonald's. You'll see the same police car. Okay. The same police vehicle right there. If you look past these gates, you'll see the 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 lights. Well, it's not on, but you know you can see. All right. There you go. Okay. So here we are at the drive through. I am getting ready to order food for the kids. Okay, let's go to the next video now. So now, another police vehicle, as I was ordering, drove by. So I am going around to pay for our food. Another police vehicle here. Okay, and let me um, speed this up. Let me skip past some of this. Uh, you know, I have so many videos that I have to skip past uh, a lot of this stuff. But you know, uh, and particularly they were using uh, cars with the license plate the number thirty-two again. But it's just it's just too many, and and you know it's going to bog down my time in terms of doing this video, and. Um, you know, so I have to skip past a lot of this stuff. Okay. Um, all right. Okay, yeah. So let's move to the next video because there's another interesting aspect that's going to arise that I want you guys to see. To skip past this so I'm just trying to if I rem I can't remember every single thing but I'm just trying to get to the parts that I do remember that I think it's 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 important and it's vital okay all right so so now we're you know we're close to Pam's job okay See a perp stand up there, he's covering his mouth on the sidewalk. Okay, now so we're heading down this block, okay, and you're gonna see a figure he, right there. If you look right by where this van is in front of me, is if you look to the right, you'll see a guy standing up right with his back uh, towards me. He has his car door open, and he's just standing there. Okay, he's just standing there. All right. Then, as I get close, now he takes his phone out of his pocket, and he sits down in the next car. Now you see he has the security jacket on, right? Now I talked about how they use uh, people who work as security guards as part of my target, and and other TIs have also said the same thing too and basically you know they try to use this national security uh, theme you know or some public safety theme but let's 
rationalize this for a minute, right? We all know that when the government want to take away people's rights, when they want to restrict pre people's rights, when they want to commit crimes against the people, when they want to torture people, they will always claim that it in the uh, manner of national security or public safety, right? And they know this work because if they get people to become so afraid that people will just say, okay, or not say anything at all, okay? This is the nature of government agencies and governments itself in terms of committing atrocities against people, all right? Also, police department do the same thing. Um, uh, you know, other agencies do the same thing. So this is what <laughs> they do. And again, trying to use this, you know, national security headline or heading as to the reason why we're being surveilled we're being psychologically harassed, we're being tortured, psychologically tortured, our food is being poisoned, um, you know, uh, they're, they're uh, breaking up our relationships, they're destroying our family, they're, um, you know, destroying our economics, our financial uh, status, or the ability to earn a living, decent living. You know, the, um, you know, taking your career away from you, Okay, that's national security, right? Or that, for whatever reason, that's supposed to be some security, right? I'm, you know, I don't get that, really. So, and, you know, a lot of these individuals, again, they take uh, instructions from those uh, religious uh, individuals who are part of a cult, who work within uh, various agencies, um, including the police department. Um, who have been continuously, you know, harassing and targeting me. And so, you know, I put together some articles because if they want to talk about security, like I'm some sort of security threat, which I'm not, you know, I'm just trying to survive being in this program, trying to raise my kids, trying to not, you know, um, uh, uh, be so stressed out because of what they're doing. And, you know, trying to, uh, I don't want to say preserve, but, you know, but trying to have a good relationship with their mother, okay, because they already destroyed the relationship between my oldest son, uh, Bryce, and his mother, so we don't even have a relationship within that, so, you know, they've, you know, our relationship was bad, but they, you know, it, it doesn't say if it was, it, it, it couldn't be salvageable, even a friendship, okay? because of what these people, they use her to target me and all this stuff. So, you know, and they using, doing the same thing with Pam, except because, you know, we've been together for, you know, 11 years, you know, it's a little bit more difficult, but I think now because of the issues you have in the past, and again, they're constantly, uh, you know, introducing people towards males, you know, towards her, uh, you know, and they use what is called the uh, boyfriend destroyer. And um, let's, uh, I'm not going to expound on that yet, but, okay, so let's go back to the video. So, you'll see him here, he gets in his vehicle, he waits, right? So, you know, he was just standing there until I approach, then he takes his phone out of his pocket and gets in his car, right? Again, this is the stuff that they do. So, uh, let's go back here. Um, I don't want to miss anything at this point, right? And so, you know, Pamela works at uh, New York Presbyterian, and you know, go to pick up. You know, and of course, when I arrive again, all of a sudden she gets very busy, right? So. Uh, she can't leave when she's supposed to leave, right? Because now they start bombarding her with stuff again as an attempt to prevent us from going grocery shopping. 
you know, they the little stuff that they do to irk you or to, you know, make you uh, uncomfortable, upset. They all keep it's like they keep digging at you. They keep prodding at your side, right? So eventually, guess what? You know, some people, you know, end up, um, you know, becoming so upset or angry that they lash other people. And this, and that's what it's meant to do, right? That's what it's meant to do, all right? And that, that's what, uh, you know, uh, helps their narrative, all right? Their narrative of them labeling you like some sort of uh, um, uh, public uh, safety uh, um, issue. I would say, or say that you know you're a threat to public safety and stuff like that. You know, this is this is what they do, right? So, all right. So let's go to the next video. Okay, we're still waiting there, and then sooner, uh, eventually, as soon as we get there, um, you'll see the cops shows up. Well, actually, you won't see this one, but you know, as I was waiting, let's see if I can get to that part. I gotta try to get to that part. I might have missed it. Okay, you'll see me. I just turned the the phone so I can get a, a better view of the sidewalk across the street because we are doing a lot of street theater across the street. Um, and I'm trying to see if I can find that video where the police officer shows up. He sees like walking. He's you know he's on the sidewalk on the right. I mean on, on the right on the left out of view of the um you know <laughs> the phone so I can't record him. Okay. So I think in this okay I might have missed that on the last video, but at this point here, a police vehicle again uh pulled up behind me. Okay. So police vehicle just pulled up behind me. Okay, and then yeah. Okay. So this guy that you see here in this blue shirt, okay. You see, he, he he looks at me. Then he's gonna walk behind the car, and he's gonna stare at the back windshield into the car. So I'm trying to. So okay, okay, so right. So after after he did that, right, then the police vehicle drove off and that then you'll see them uh, come yep there they go there they, there they go <laughs> okay all right so this is you know again this is uh, uh you know to continue with the street theater so 
So Pan got in the car, okay, and radio space, I got it muted. Alright, so now let's go. So we're on our way uh, to the, uh, the Fort Hamilton um, so we can go to the commissary and go grocery shopping. Okay, so now you'll see coming up here again. See here you go, you know, the police vehicle. Okay, look at his park. And again, you know, this is all street theater, all right? And so they what what they're doing, okay, is you'll see them, you'll see a, a, a young woman standing at the corner, and they're I guess they're having a conversation with her, but you know, that's it. This is it's all street theater. Okay, this again, this is how they uh, mask Okay, talked about that before how they mask the targeting. Okay, this is how they do it. Okay, okay. let's go. Okay, this is us. This is us getting on the highway. And let's go to the next video. Um, okay, so this is now emerging on the highway. And Okay, so you hear me say to her, move your head, right? So again, microwave, they're microwaving us, and, you know, I'm looking, I'm trying to merge, right, Because as I'm entering onto the highway, and I'm trying to merge into the next lane. Now, I can't merge because she decided, right, that she's going to put her head down to block my view of the side mirror, so I can't see anything. So that's what I mentioned to her. Hey, I can't see. You have to move your head. Okay? Now, she's never done anything like that before because she knows I tell her all the time when we're driving. You know, she, you know, especially if you're going on the highway, she can't block the side mirror. Okay? And this is how they nudge people to do things so that you can get into an accident. Right? And so, again, because I've been in this program for so long, I know their tricks. I know their tricks. And... You know, most of the time, I'm very quick to react, and then sometimes I'm not because, again, when you're being microwave, it does affect you, and I have to really, really concentrate in terms of, you know, um, watching the people around me, even Pam, even the kids, so that, you know, they don't do anything that's dangerous, or I don't do anything that's dangerous, or, you know, impulsive, right? Because this is what they'll do, right? They'll, 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 uh, microwave you and all of a sudden you start to feel this impulsive nature to do something right and it can be to your detriment so you got to remember that as a target and always um, you know uh, you know always I was I'm not gonna say second guess but always uh, just don't do things without thinking but don't don't rush to do things I should say don't rush into things. Don't be impulsive, right? Because this is what the technology will make you do or make you become. Okay. Okay. Um, all right, let's go to the next video. All right, so here we are, we're leaving. Uh, you know, I'm not going to play this video. Uh, let's get to here. Okay. So now, as we're heading back home, okay, there's a vehicle, uh, SUV that I pulled up behind me. Yeah, 
So you hear me talk about So this is what we call a bride, and this is what they do to us TI when we're on the road. Um, whether they're coming towards us or behind us. So this guy was behind me, constantly flashing his high beams behind me. Okay? Constantly flashing his high beams behind me. And so I kind of wanted to show that because you know this is something that they do, right? And um, you know, and it's it's ridiculous if you, you think about it, right? It's really, really ridiculous. And then of course. Here we, and I'm, the video still paused, but uh, here I am. And again, that vehicle here, the number 32, a red vehicle. Again, that was a, the uh, big theme of the day, the color red, right? Um, let me see, I just went back. So, when, okay, so the light change, you are going. Okay, so see this individual came out from between the cars, looked at me, and then looked at the license plate of the red vehicle. Let me see if I can show you that number. So you can get it. No, no, not quite. But that vehicle had the number 32 in the license plate. Okay. All right, let's see. If we get that. All right, then we get onto Pan's block, and of course, you had an ambulance there parked up, you know, lights flashing, you know, the usual, right? So, let's go to the next video. Uh, did I? I may, I may have missed the video. Um, I'm going to pause this and I'm going to come back to try to find that video because it's important. Okay, so I don't know how I missed that video. I guess they must have wanted me to miss it because <laughs> I thought I had imported all these uh, every video. Apparently, I didn't. And there's a reason why I guess I missed this video. So, okay, so I'm waiting for parking, all right? Or at least, you know, Pam might get like the car with the kids to go upstairs to get the, the cart to bring it downstairs to unload the groceries, all right? And so you'll see I ended up uh, getting parking. Um, we got here, so, yep, so I ended up getting parking, all right? And then, not long after I get parking, let's see here. Uh, if I can get to that part, might have uh, missed it. Oh. Okay, so not long after I got parking, again, you'll see an unmarked uh, police vehicle, lights flashing, drive by, right? And so, again, this is, again, you know, the stuff that they do. Again, when I talk about the increase in police presence around me, whenever I go somewhere, wherever I show up, especially, you know, my block up hands block or, you know, when I'm traveling or have you, you know, as you guys know, okay, that this is, uh, yeah, this is, they're using these tactics again. And so now, um, this morning, this is this morning, Friday the uh, 15th, all right, taking the kids to school. So again, you see the kid with the red sweater. Now you'll see the 
the what you call the crossing guard as she walks by stands in front of me okay let me um, go back on the webcam so she stands in front of me and she does this okay tell you it, it, it never stops with these individuals okay it never stops all right Okay, I'm gonna make his girl and I'm back on the block. Wait, gonna wait for Pam to um, take her to work. So I actually double parked because it's all to the side. And I went upstairs and, um, you know, gone upstairs again. And, you know, she had, because um, last night I had packed the groceries in the fridge. And then she had bought some salmon that I ended up putting in the freezer. You know, I mean, I was tired. It was late last night, you know, with all the targeting that's going on. So I put the salmon in the freezer, and I guess she wanted, you know, because she bought the salmon, she wanted to make uh, breakfast with the salmon, which didn't happen. And I took out the freezer, gave it to her. She got mad, threw it in the bottom of the fridge, stormed off. And I'm like, over frozen salmon? Not like I threw it in the garbage, you know? Now, a couple of weeks ago, I had, um, when the kids was at my house, we had uh, came back and I had cooked and I bought dinner, you know, for her, me, the kids, and you know, I had in a plastic bag. She took the plastic bag and threw it down the garbage chute. Okay, and we were all hungry, including her. You know, I didn't get upset. I didn't start screaming, and you know, I didn't you know look at her with disgust or disappointment or have you I just said to her all right fine you know it's okay we'll just find something else to eat and that's it okay but you want to get upset with me over some salmon that you know like I said is and I told her, I said well take it to work okay by the time you get to work it will defrost and then you know you can put it on your bagel because right, you're going to eat at work anyway and then she's like, no, because I don't want to leave it there. I don't want to forget it. And I'm like, okay, well, then, all right. But to get upset over that is really ridiculous. And that's just to show you that now little things, okay, little things she's getting upset at, okay? So in a relationship, we all know that when your partner starts, you know, nitpicking and getting upset over little things, okay, all right, you know what's happening, okay? So, again, you know, because again they're interfering you know with our relationship what have you and so this is what they do right and you know because she's like um, I'm gonna have dinner with one of her girlfriend I'm like you've never had dinner with this person before never so all of a sudden now you use her to say you're gonna have dinner I don't think so you know so like I said, I, I'm gonna, you know, like I guess I've said it before. I'll take a step back and, and you know, I've to talk to her about these things, and you know, but. Just being a black man in America, knowing how the, the this white supremacist society have destroyed black families over and over again, and continue to destroy black families. And that's one of the things that I try to uh, not let happen, okay, this time around. But it's hard when you're a target and, you know, your significant other, whether it be your girlfriend, your boyfriend, uh, you know, your boyfriend or your husband, your wife, you know, they cause rift within the relationship, okay? Um, they call, they do what they what is called the boyfriend destroyer or the girlfriend destroyer using other people, friends, family members to paint a negative picture of your significant other and by telling them, you know, well, you know, um, you can find somebody better and blah, 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 and all this stuff. So, you know, this is all part of, of, of what it is that they do. So you guys got to be aware of that. All right. So let's go to the next video. Um, actually, I'm not going to play that one. I'm not going to play that one either. Okay, let's get to...
this one. All right. So drop to off. Okay, from work. I mean at work. Dropped off at work. And let me take the webcam off because all of a sudden I I'm starting to feel itchy. So again, you know, this is what they do. You know, particularly if TIs are going to be watching my video, they will, you know. I will start to feel itchy and having to touch my head, my, you know, my rest of my part of my body, and stuff like that. So I just turn the webcam off. So I dropped it off at work and heading towards the light. And then I saw this police vehicle again turned, but then it stopped. All right, it stopped. It turned on its lights. Okay, and you guys are going to hear it turn on the siren. Okay, so I have to mute the volume, but I want you guys to hear the siren, the sound of the sirens, right? Now, again, okay, you may say, well, you decided to not work, in, and again, you see how the woman, uh, as I approached, she looked at her watch. Remember I talked about this? You know, I've been telling you guys this <laughs> since the beginning, uh, when I started doing my show and talk show, I started doing my YouTube videos about how... Uh, you know, when um, going in the train station or uh, leaving the train station, there'll be police officers, usually white police officers. Not usually, all the time. White police officers, as I walk towards them, they will constantly look at their watch and look at me, and they'll do it multiple times. So I remember I talked about how them using third, doing things in a third party, uh, uh, pers not perspective, I'm trying to find the, the correct term here. Uh, you know, like indirect threat, right? In an indirect threat, in an indirect way. So them, you know, turning here, stopping, turn on the lights, uh, you know, then using the sirens as they uh, turn and drive off. And then this woman here, as I approach, starts looking at her watch. Okay. And now you'll see them right here and as I turn and approach you see they had their their uh, the indicator right so you see the indicator they turned on their right indicator as to say that they're going to make a right turn right but now you see them make the u-turn okay coming in the opposite direction now okay so this is the stuff that they do right Okay, so let's um, let's go. Let's see. Let's see if I remember anything else. Uh, okay. Um, I think at, at the coming to the end of this video, let's see if I let it play. So I reached the next block over as I was making a turn. Again, another police vehicle coming down, and. I thought I had recorded it, but obviously, you know, the recording stopped, so I couldn't record it. And um, and I'm heading home now because I have some of my groceries that I had brought down from Pam uh, uh, to bring to my house in the morning after dropping off from work to work, I should say. And um, Okay, so now you'll see again the red theme again played the red theme played out here as you'll see this woman standing here. Now there is no bus stop here. Okay. You see the ground is wet, it's raining, you know, but she is just standing there. Because obviously, you know, I took a different route, so again, they do this in real time. So when I turn on up onto this street, they already had a perp, you know. And whether it be the next block off or the next block before, it will still be somebody there wearing red standing there looking at their phone as I'm about to make the turn. You know, because again, this is a theme that they has played out, right? Yeah. 
And so as a TI, when you experience the stuff, you get to, you basically uh, know who the perps are for the, for the majority of the, of the time. Sometimes you may be wrong, but the majority you get to be able to identify these perps. And uh, let me see, I think, uh, so anyways, I, this is he had at home, and um, I was like, why is there a uh, garbage truck? Usually garbage truck, they come very early in the morning. It's very rarely that you see a garbage truck picking up garbage at around, you know, 11 a.m. They usually, they're, they're at 6 a.m. in the morning, very early. But there are times when I was being targeted early on that I would constantly see garbage truck, constantly, constantly see garbage truck. And the way how they do it here, it's, you know, it's in a way that, again, uh, get my attention. So as I, you know, what I should have done, instead of going to the side, I should have just pulled up directly behind the garbage truck because, you see, the, as I approach uh, this guy, uh, he's bringing the, the, the garbage can to put in the garbage truck. But then he did a hand signal, right? And then he touched his nose, right? And like I said, it was my fault for not parking uh, not pulling up directly behind him, but I thought maybe I can, uh, you know, go to the side and and um, be able to to pass them, but I I couldn't. So, all right. Um, so, let's go to the next video. Okay, now I want you guys to pay attention to this individual coming across the street here. Not the person on the right, but the person across the street. Okay? And how they become very, when they see me, see how she wave her hand so I can see the palm of her hand. All right? And then she becomes very animated with her hands now. She's approaching me. She's, you know, there she goes. She's scratching, sticking her middle finger out. Then see how animated she comes and then she turns her palm of her hand towards me you guys see that okay let's go again All right so all of a sudden she's touching her hand she's scratching her hand sticking her middle finger out starting with the pointed finger talked about that then she turns the palm of her hands towards me okay so again everything Pre-plan, and this is daily. This is, you know, it's like <laughs> these people wake up in the morning. You know, I gotta be very, very early to plan this stuff up because they know my daily routine. Okay, they know from the time I started bringing my uh, groceries downstairs after, um, you know, when I went to pick up Pam to take her to work, that of course I was going to be going to my house to drop off my groceries. Okay, so again, everything is pre meditated it is planned out with precision and you know here I am going back uh, I Pam I think I might have this video might be um, uh, actually yes this is okay the stuff on the beginning so that uh, I might have had that playing in the background okay so I got back in the car and there was these two guys. There was a there was a car that was parked right beside where I was parked, and there was a guy standing at the um, on the sidewalk. Right now, this vehicle is an SUV, and it has uh, the word "Thank Jesus." Okay, again, we talk about these cult members, these religious cult members, who participated in this stuff. Um, you know, and again, so here I am. Let's, let's go back here because uh, I don't want to miss this. So this is my block. I'm driving to the intersection. And again, synchronization. So you see the, the guy with the bike, okay? And you see a, a woman standing uh, over here in the corner. She's dressed in all black. He looks at her. He looks at her again, okay? 
He looks at her a third time. All right. Okay. Okay. Now she turns around. And then, do you see what he did? As she turns around. All right. Let me, uh, you guys, so I can show you guys. So when she turns around, he takes his hands and he looks at his nail, just like this. Okay, or you know, like this. All right. Okay, she turns around. Now you see this Jewish guy. This Jewish man comes up from behind the car. Okay. Yeah, they're smart. You know, I'm gonna tell you how, let me show you how smart they are. See, right now we're at a distance where I can't make out his face, neither her face. So she turns, she looks at him, she turns around and she looks at me. Okay. Now he's gonna be smoking a cigarette. Again, I talked about how they use uh, the cigarette, the smoking, and all that stuff. How they use uh, that when I guess they cannot use the fire trucks. And you know what? I think I might have forgotten to show you guys the fire truck in the video. I'm gonna have to go back to that video again because I remember which video it was. I wish I would have played it when you know earlier. Okay, so you see how he turns. He turns his face. All right, as I was as I'm approaching. Okay, because he does not want to be recognized. Okay, so he turns his face. So I can't get uh, you know, I can't get his face on video. Okay. All right. All right. So, before I continue, let me try to find that video. Um, okay, it might be it's not this one. Uh, not this one. Okay, I think it's this one. All right. Um, okay, let's go. Okay, so it might be, it might be, it might be this one. Let's see. Okay. Um, all right. So you, you hear the fire truck? There it goes. See it right there. Okay. So this was again. Um, this was Thursday. Okay, on my way to pick Pam up from her job so we can go grocery shopping. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> okay. So I just wanted to show that part because I missed that part. I forgot it. You have to excuse me. And you know, it, again, this is something that they, you know, they're using all the tactics, but they're spreading it out, right? It's not so much, except with the with, with the police. Okay. Also, before I forget, um, um, and I'm glad I saw this. So you see, as I'm driving down, you're gonna see uh, there's a lady, um, you know, exiting out of her vehicle. Okay, and she closely she looks at me, and then she has a white tissue in her hands, and she's, you know, taking her white tissue in her hands, so she can show it to me. So remember how I talked about people walking in front of me, you know, with a white sheet of paper in their hand. Sometimes they'll stick they have their middle finger on the other side of it. Okay. So yesterday when we were doing grocery shopping at the commissary, you know, which I don't really record in there, um, you know, they'll use those opportunity to target me uh severely, you know, whenever we do grocery shopping at the commissary. Uh because you know uh, we are Fort Hamilton base, so I don't really be caught on, you know, any U.S. base, um, you know, so they'll have people that are um, targeting me, the soldiers, uh, you know, have me targeting me, like, you know, intensely. And so yesterday, uh, there were these old ladies there, all right? And every time, it's funny, because I went to use the bathroom, all right, with my son. And as I came out of the bathroom with the synchronization, there's an old lady that came out of the woman's bathroom that's right across from the men's bathroom. 
and as she comes out, we're exited at, at of the bathrooms at the same time. She had a white tissue in her hands, and she blew her nose. I'm like, okay, you know, again, normally I wouldn't pay attention to that, you know, but then it happened a second time after going back to the aisle to my car. There was another older lady there who did the same thing in front of me. Okay, so at that point, I'm like, okay, and so there was a reason why this woman again standing there, just as how the guy with the security jacket was standing there as I approach. She, she did the same thing as she did that. Okay, and again, uh, this is uh, you know um, conditioning, but when they've conditioned you. They don't have to do it in a repeated, uh, long-term manner anymore. They'll do it. They'll do things in such a way that you know it will get your attention, right? So, for example, let's say you're <clears throat> walking down the street and a person walk pa past you and they sneeze, right? Then the next person that walk past you, they sneeze, okay? Whereas before, let's say you walk past six people and they all sneeze as they walk past you. Now, you know, only two people have to do it. Okay, but it has to be done consecutively. Okay, with no interruption. All right, so let's go. Okay, and let's. Go. Uh, okay. All right. So I'm not. I'm uh, not. Sh I don't think you're gonna see it. But um. Okay. So you see again. You'll see a street there. See if you look on the right, you'll see a group of people standing there. Right. There's like four of them. Okay. As I approach. You'll see this girl here, she's wearing all black, okay? She takes her hand, puts it behind her again, and, you know, open the palm of her, open her hands up so I can see the palm of her hand, right? And, okay, and the camera didn't pick it up. But, you'll see here now, so now, as I, Cross over to this light. No, I'm too far. I, I, I hate this thing. Light change as I cross over to this light. Okay. You'll see here's a young woman here and an older woman that's sitting here at the bus stop. And as I drive by, the young woman takes her phone out of her pocket. She looks at it. The older woman, and again, I'm not trying to trigger anybody. She did this. Okay. That's what she did. This. Hold up to her forehead with her thumb sticking out. Okay. Now, that's tell you as a, as a TI you know they've conditioned everyone young and old to participate and to target you okay all right so let's get past this and again here I am uh, going to the next stop light and again another guy in a red jacket and it's funny cuz they're just standing there right everybody else is moving but these people wearing red the majority of them who are wearing red are just Stand in the street corner, or stand up against a, a, a wall, a building, a fence, a gate, you know, staring at their phone. Okay. All right. Let's let me. Um, so you got, you'll see some pedestrians uh, across the street. And um, I'm about to view this because I haven't viewed this fully to see if they did anything. Okay. All right. Did she, oh, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a 
a minute. Like I said, I don't want to miss anything. Okay, so she bows her head as she's walking. Uh, again, the one way in black. Okay, on the far left. Okay. And you'll see again, she's doing this. And she walks across the street. Okay. Right. Next video. Again, still on my way to Pam's. Okay, let's. What's this one here? Okay, so I pulled up on the block, on Pam's block. And um, let's get. Yeah. Okay. As soon as I pulled up, this guy goes walks out into the street. And you see this guy come right here in the black and the blue jeans. As he comes over, again you'll see he put his hand and you'll see his palm open up the way how he uh, turns his hand, his left hand. See it there, okay. So I can see, see again. The minute as I pr as I, sh I show up as I approach it, you know. And the reason why I, especially when I see a group of people standing around, if I have to wait for parking, I park behind them because I know that they're going to be doing street theater. So I want to be able to be in position where I can get it on video and show you guys. And you can see clearly he starts and he's looking at me, okay. He's looking at me as he finished doing that, right? And you'll see, I don't want to play this whole thing because it's pretty long, but they constantly look back at me, constantly, okay? You can see, I can count how many times he's kept looking back at me. But I want to show you guys this part here. So again, he walks across, looks at me, looking at the, uh, the license plate of the car, because this is what they'll they do at times. Um, okay, that's uh, all right. So at this point here, now I look in my rearview mirror, and I saw this car pulling out of a parking space, right? But this is what they do too at times. What they'll do, they'll sit in their vehicle, act as if they're coming out of the parking space, so I can reverse or go next to them because they want me to see the color of the car. That's the only reason I couldn't even see the license plate the way how he was uh, positioned, and it was a black car. And so I reverse all the way back, okay, thinking that he was going to come out, okay. And let me, you know, I think I forgot something here. Uh, so let's let's see here. I think I forgot something there. You know, see, again, you'll see. Okay, here we go. So now you see this guy come out, right? He's wearing a red shirt, okay. And at that point, I look into my rearview mirror and I saw the car coming out. The guy turns the turns on his lights, act as if he was pulling out of the parking space. Right? And so I reverse. Okay, so he goes back. And you'll see, let me just get past that. So I reverse back. And yes, I thought like he was coming out because he literally was coming out of the parking space. When I pull up on that block, that car was there. It was parked. So when I look back and I saw, and it's funny because neither one of these vehicles even attempt to get to reverse back to get that parking space, right? This again, let me know that this is all pre-planned and they all know what's going on. They all participating in this. All right. So now I'm gonna go right back. Okay right back behind these guys okay
looks back at me again. He starts jumping on the back of the vehicle. Okay? And now, watch. He takes his hands, puts his behind his back, to the side actually of his back, presses his thumb with his palm facing towards me again on his shirt. Okay? All right? See that? Then he grabs his belt or his, his, his clothes. Okay? So this is, you know, the stuff that they do. Okay? So I kind of wanted to do another video, cause, but I'm just going to make this a quick I'm going to add it onto this video. So let's talk about the security thing, right? If I'm supposed to be some sort of security threat, uh, uh, um, uh, a threat to public safety, right? Let's 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 see, talk about who the real threats are, okay? Which is these people who participate in these things. Not also that, but these crooked police officers, okay, that engage in this kind of conduct and behavior, okay? Let's talk about them, okay? So if you if you Go to Wikipedia, right? Go to Wikipedia, right? New York City Police Department Corruption and Misconduct, and you will see a long list of things that the NYPD <clears throat> has done to people. But yet, I'm a security threat. Okay, so the doorbell was ringing, and uh, buzzed it. They rang again. I buzzed them in, and you know, I, I maybe you know, Pam got a package being delivered. So I went to the window to look outside, and as I went to the window to look outside, it was a Spanish, uh, young Spanish woman, walking by with her dog. Again, uh, looking at her watch, right? <laughs> so, this is what they do, right? So, there's probably no package. This is somebody who just, you know, again, this is all street theater. This is this is some of the stuff that they do. So, they'll ring the bell. Um, normally, you know, I'll look outside to see if there's like a, a UPS truck, a FedEx truck, or USPS truck, or a delivery truck outside, right? There wasn't any. And like I said, uh, across the street, the uh, young Spanish woman. Uh, walking by with her dog, looking at her watch, you know, looking at it, you know, so they must have said to her, well, I want you to stare at your watch for about a minute because eventually he's going to come to the window and look. But this is, again, this is what they do, all right? So anyway, let's talk about the uh, the threat to public safety and security, okay? So since these people within the police department, these uh, um religious cult members and they want to go around and spread and you know uh, propaganda and and, and um, negative information about me what have you so such let's look at them okay and the corruption and the misconduct that they've done you know and this is a whole host of stuff and there's even more there's more stuff okay let's talk about this right NYPD uh, police officers union want to keep sexual misconduct on the wraps, right? They don't want their own dirt aired out, okay? But yet they'll go around uh, spread a negative rumor and negative propaganda against individuals, right? Again, let's talk about that again. Planting evidence, okay? Driving while black. On um, people killed by police. New York police plans drug on innocent people to meet arrest quarters. Okay? Let's talk about the stop and frisk. Okay? What they've done. Right? Drivers rightfully lose his shit when he sees cops planting evidence. Okay? Police assault on African American women. Okay? Hmm. NYPD Operation Lucky Bag resurfaced in Manhattan. Okay? So, what is that? Right? What do they do? It says, Manhattan says, uh, public defenders of Manhattan says, NYPD has reprised a 
ruse in which passerby are trapped into arrest because they picked up planted pick up property planted by cops. Right? It says blasted by judge and public defenders for entrapping innocent people. Okay? And this is just a few. This is just a few. Okay? So, you know, you want to go around, you know, spreading your lies or whatever, or you trying to set people up. You you have a history. You have a history. Okay? You have the police department and those in the police department those members in the police department, particularly these people in these cults, they have a history. So let's look about and talk about public safety. Let's look and talk about uh, public security or national security. Okay? Don't come at me with that nonsense. Because your argument holds no water. With me, it holds no water. Okay? You are more, these people who are in this cults are more of a public safety, national security problem than I could ever be or ever wish to be. All right? So let's just get that straight. Let's get that straight. All right? Uh, so that's it for the video. I will um, see you guys on the next one. Again, this is the Target Individual Program, the Target Individual Experience. And, um, you know, I'm giving it to you guys, you know, from my point of view of my targeting and how they target me and the things that they do. And for all you perpetrators out there thinking that, you know, this is like some type of mystical, magical, spiritual stuff, no, it is not. Okay. And eventually, if you guys continue to participate in this, your health is going to diminish, your psychological state is going to diminish. If you have kids, your children's psychological state is going to diminish. Ne neurological issues they're going to have in terms of um, headaches, in terms of uh, short-term memory loss. So go ahead. Go ahead. I'm just trying to educate you guys and put the truth out there for you guys, okay? Because you're, if your religious belief makes you think that it's okay to do this because you're some soldier of God or they give you some title, okay? Because, you know, they're not giving you a whole a lot of money, the majority of you. Majority of you they recruit into this because of your belief. Okay? While they're reaping the benefit and the reward. Okay? They've always done this to people. Alright? And you gotta wake up. And if your religion is making you or keeping you blind from seeing the truth, then maybe you should think about what you truly believe. Okay, maybe you should start finding out the truth. Okay?